Today we're going to go into Al Balud, the historic part of Jeddah. We're going to explore around there. We're frugal travellers and we like to use public transport. There is a bus apparently. To get to it, we've got to walk to the Saudi Airlines office, which is across this road. And that's one of the problems we're having here, walking as pedestrians in Saudi Arabia and all the Middle East, actually. It's quite difficult getting across these massive roads. There's a big bridge there. We're hoping we can cross it and then get on a bus into the city. Paper has just ended and now we have to walk on the motorway, which isn't the best situation. It's a great success. It is a bridge. But as you can see, not very good for cyclists. You've got your tire marks there. Plus in there. There is a lift, but it's closed for maintenance. It's actually quite fascinating to see what's at the back of that massive billboard. You know, all of the, the TV screens and wires and things. Amazing. It saved us about a four kilometre round <laughs> trip walking. I don't think they get a lot of pedestrians around here. We've just seen a red bus. Yeah. We're going to wave it oh he's in yep this isn't even a bus stop we've just chosen somewhere so lee's got the thing lee okay lee's got the ticket the two people Awesome journey, really nice Pakistani bus driver. I'm really pleased we found Sapco and we know we can get around Jeddah using this. And this, uh, it was called the Bin Laden Mosque, um, right by Al Balad, which is where all the buses go from. So come here, you get a bus, different parts of the Jeddah. With our usual skill, I think we've come in like one of the lesser known alleys into Al Balad. Yeah, we'll come in the back door as we normally do. <laughs> so this is the historic area of old uh, Jeddah. This is uh, Jeddah was, has been a trading centre and a port for, for centuries. I think since the uh, seventh century. Right. Yeah. And this was the you know um, the centre of all the activity where everything happened. And the buildings were all made out of uh, Red Sea coral, which is really interesting. And you've got these beautiful wooden. Uh, okay, I don't think this things. is a very good example. Okay. I think we should go Let's go elsewhere. somewhere <laughs> with a good example, shall we? <laughs> really interesting area. There's, there's some places that have been redeveloped and there's other places that have fallen to bits and hopefully they're going to restore these places and keep them as they were traditionally because it's so nice to see. It's very uh, unique. You can hear someone listening to cricket behind me. It's so funny. Blankets. I mean, seriously, it's winter here and it's about 28 degrees. I don't know why people need blankets. This is so wonderful. We've just met these amazing guys yeah. and look at what they're carrying. And so I checked, yeah, I checked with them. And so is this a charity? No, it's a government project. Oh, fantastic. Because I was saying like there are so many street cats and how wonderful that these guys are catching them. They're going to go to a vet, a veterinary place for treatment, and that is so cool. How wonderful to meet you, like you're doing such a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. It's like blue tape around this green building. It looks like it's like holding it all together because it's all listing to one side and it's about to fall down, but I hope it doesn't because it looks just magnificent. Yes, I mean, I, mean, I didn't realise it was so much woodwork. This is just a great example of the amazing lattice work on these buildings. You can see uh, they were built to like keep them cool and let the wind through. Uh, modern day windows, but without the glass. So as I was saying before, they're the built of Red Sea coral. I think this one is here. I was pointing to concrete before, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. But well, yeah, you can see. Amazing. The woodwork. And these ones here, that they've been blocked off. Restoration. Yeah, for restoration. It's going to be so wonderful how they're redoing 
this old part of town to make sure yeah. it's an amazingly important area, like doesn't go to wreck and it's ruin. It's got to be preserved, definitely. Yeah. This is another one of the buildings, National Heritage Buildings, the contracting. Let's just see how far I can get in. Lovely old wooden door. So it's a lot cooler in here than it is outside. So this is a museum here, it's been restored. And then wow, look at this beautiful building here on this side as well. That's so cool. It's just like, it really is an amazing area. Now of course, because it's now like 12 o'clock, most things are gonna be closed until 4 p.m. So, I'm not too sure we're gonna to have to walk around and try to find something to have for lunch. But we'll just soak up this lovely atmosphere in the meanwhile. So it's winter, it's about um, 30 degrees and I'm wiping away the perspiration. But one thing I wanted to say is this place, it just really reminds me of, of Kathmandu. When like, Lee and I first met in 1996 and we used to walk around the, the beautiful old area near the Royal Palace that was mainly destroyed in the earthquake. It feels like that, like the beautiful buildings behind white and with the woodwork mm. just yeah really lovely i suspect this is a way we should have actually walked in rather than the back way what do you think lee yeah there's many <laughs> entrances and exits i think but yeah, it's quite clear where the historic center is just aim towards the beautiful buildings <laughs> and the construction work <laughs> <laughs> This is the Bait Nasif, a museum, very important one because it was the house of King Abdulaziz back in the day and apparently uh, the tree outside, it was the only tree in the whole of Jeddah in 1920 according to the Lonely Planet. <laughs> wow. Unfortunately the museum looks closed at the minute, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it says it's 25 to go in. Uh, should be interesting to see inside but the door's closed. Who knows how long it's closed for. So many lovely kittens. Oh. I hope you get some good treatment, little one. This is amazing. It's actually incense. As we walk up along here, hopefully there's going to be a couple of places open. Are these guys are just closing now? Hello. Hello. Oh, I smelled this one before. It did smell amazing. Incense Luban. Uh, one thing to take note of is that everything shuts down at around about midday here and it's dead for five hours until about 5 p.m. So if you want to come shopping, come later in the day. If you want to come for quiet streets and so to take some photos, come in the middle of the day. This is another amazing looking alleyway. Can you see the angle? Like how much it's tilting. That's about ready to fall. What a look of things, isn't it? It's yes. And this is definitely, I'd say, Red Sea Coral behind you, Lee. Yeah, you can see, yeah, definitely the texture of it. Oh, look at the lovely uh, intricate carving work on there. Yeah, I bet these facades would have been covered in it back in the day. I if it meant anything. It smells like this whole thing is ready to come down. Probably should move away. <laughs> wow, another beautiful building. This one looks as though it has had work done to it. It's a lot more stable. So beautiful. And just so much cooler down these streets. I don't know about the way the wind flows, I'm not too sure. And to even further like the resemblance towards Nepal or Thailand, it's a cycle rickshaw. Oh my word, that's so cool. So we're now search for lunch. We've stumbled across a market. Seems to be selling like women's clothing, material. Yeah, lots of material. No restaurants, unfortunately. Where on earth are they, do you think? They must all be like hidden somewhere. Sometimes you've got to make a bit of an effort, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Find what you want in life. Beautiful. Peering through the door. Oh my word. What a magnificent door. I love the wooden uh, beams and look at the, the 
Beautiful. Amazing stonework. Okay, this place looks quite promising for lunch. Seen a few people go in and out. Everything's in Arabic, but I'm sure she'll, someone will help us or something. Okay. Uh, Lovely. Okay, so this is our meal. It's not quite what I was expecting. This is the beef. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is this called? Name? N name? What is it called? Three. No, okay. Thank you. Didn't quite understand. So I've got no idea what this is. Um, what is the name? Name? This is potluck really, yeah, but we get the beef and it uh, looks like there's some vegetables on the side of the rice. Yeah. Uh, Extra things. <laughs> We've got the chilies and the onion. So this in total with the two waters came to 37 real. Is it chili? It's chili, yes. there's something um, like really refreshing in there as well, mint I think. Something okay. Like that. Really good. And this is something they said it's um Yemeni. I don't know what this was called as well, maybe. It's it's full. They said full with um, milk. With milk. I don't know if it's a dessert. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Wow. Yeah. It's quite um stodgy, so it, I think that'll fill us up. I think we're gonna be we're not gonna be hungry after this lot. So they've just brought us some more um, pickle. It was like another dish that we didn't quite expect. But We've got a table full now, haven't we? Yeah, oh, it's lovely. What do you reckon? It's a lovely. A plastic spoon, so you eat with your hands mainly, so you wash beforehand. But um, like I'm the only female in here, and we're the only Westerners in here. So <laughs> very, very local. Yeah. It's delicious, actually. With all these lovely flavours. Um, this might be like a green chilli. So you know the green chilli. It's a really delicious tender meat. I'm not sure if it's beef or lamb. What do you think, Lee? Beef, I thought. Okay. But yeah, it's soft and tender and wonderful. And because we've paid in advance, if they do keep bringing us stuff, <laughs> we can pay for it because we're like, it's paid already. Slowly <laughs> filling the table. I feel so full. That was amazing. I'd go back there in a flash. Yeah. We had some of the, the yogurt dessert, the yogurt dish left over. I don't think the kids like it. Do you like it or not? No, I don't think they do. Mm. I'm not seeing any Yemeni food. No, but they yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. What about Mr. Big Boy? He likes it. He likes it, don't you? So funny, we spent all that time wandering around, trying to find somewhere to eat, couldn't find anywhere. Walked around the corner after eating, and there's restaurants all the way down here. It's just like <laughs> to the north of Albalad. It's where all the restaurants seem to be. It's just a little bit daunting going into those places sometimes. You know, everything's in Arabic, you don't understand anything. There's always someone who will explain to you and translate for you. They're really friendly and helpful. That was such a nice experience in that last place. The guy explained all about it, it was Yemeni food, it was delicious. Um, so step outside your comfort zone and go in them, it's well worth it. So this is the Bab Jadid, the new gate. I think it's recreated. This is such a fascinating part of Jeddah. Now apparently in the 1940s when the oil boom happened the locals moved out of this area which has been around since the 7th century and it was sort of left to fall a little bit to wreck and ruin apparently like a host of new migrants moved in here like Yemenis etc but of course with this type of structure it needs an awful lot of maintenance and so by the 70s things were looking a bit you know a bit run down shall we say but in 2009 they applied for world heritage status of Al Balud, which is granted in I think 2014. And so now, you know, money's finally being poured into this region, this area, to showcase it. And just the amazing architecture. Like, I'm just so happy that they're not tearing it down. And this is Shabatli House, one of the finest examples of this style of architecture. Yeah, I think it's still being renovated though. It feels like uh, you get when you get to a place early and it's not quite ready yet, and, but it'll be ready soon. It feels like that here right now. It's like the Shabbat family were 
a merchant family I saw downstairs that they produced uh, fruit. I don't know if they sold, sent it around the world, but obviously it's a wealthy merchant's house. Beautiful condition. Lovely airy balconies and the woodwork. Awesome. We we'll just keep wandering around and see what we can see because we haven't. Yeah, they're it. filming there apparently. I don't know if they think we're part of the film crew, but we've got in anyway. Uh, and we haven't paid, which I think normally there's an entrance fee. I don't know. It seems empty, so it's a museum in the making here, but let's just enjoy the, the house until we get kicked out. see the inside of one of these buildings. Yeah. It's enormous as well. alleyway we find this riot of bougainvillea can you see it's just covered all over there we we're looking for bab mecca uh, mecca gate uh, where over the centuries billions of pilgrims have left from Jeddah to go to mecca it's right here apparently it used to be here they built another one a bit further down but this little um, marketplace is where bab mecca used to be Wow. Let's see if we can find the, the new one. <laughs> oh, look at all those herbs and spices and Arabian coffee. More of that amazing incense. I mean, it looks like candy, like sweets, but oh, I think this is frankincense. My kind of place. Oh my word, look at all the chocolates. food out by the Mecca Gate and there's a standoff between the kittens and the pigeons over here look dozens of cats versus hundreds of pigeons looks like someone has the same idea as us bring the leftover lunch out and leave it for the cats so behind me is the recreation of the Mecca Gate the one as Lee said earlier through which billions of pilgrims would have passed over the past 14 centuries. And the Mecca Gate and it's Mecca is 80 kilometers that way. Wow. The shape of the coral. Incredible. Wow. And we're on the hunt for Kara. And we saw a guy drinking tea and so like we asked him. And he pointed around this way. Oh, and look at this. Please join the queue. Yes, we found the place for your karate kai. Wonderful. And look at it, it's just like a window in the middle of a shopping area. Karate kai, yes. Lee, can you ask him how much yeah. it is? In Arabic? Yeah, or, or Hindi. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you. From England. 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 Oh, yes, oh, nice oh. to meet you. <laughs> Out of Did you order two, Lee? Yeah, yeah, two. Yeah. Uh, no, take away. It's okay. Like yeah. this. Oh, no lid. Yeah, no lid. It's okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, shukran. Okay, shukran. There you go. Two each. We're sorted for tea. <laughs> <laughs> So is it karak or normal chai? Yeah, yeah, it's karak. And how yeah. much was it? Uh, two each. Oh my word. Okay. Considering we've seen it yeah. elsewhere for 20, haven't we? Yeah, so there you go. It's, yeah. it's the market price. Like this. Like this. Oh, like underneath. Yeah. You're saying you hold it. Ah, uh, like this. <laughs> I see. Shotgun. <laughs> Thank you. You learn a lot from the locals. <laughs> you really do. That's amazing. It's not hot anymore. And so, you, Saudi? No, Yemen. Yemen. Ah, Yemen. How Yemen. wonderful. Yemen. But I'm so excited. We're going to buy some of these. They are 17 per kilo. Like a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> How are you doing there, Mandy? 
<laughs> you hit a kilo yet? <laughs> I don't know. I hope you're not. Okay, let's just see now how much is this going to be? 465 grams. Okay, almost half a kilo. Yeah, that's Seven. good. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So I'm so happy. Like, I'm going to make a promise to myself. If okay, I do some, you very much. some vlogging tomorrow, I can eat Shukran. some. Shukran. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And like, as always, the people we have met so far in, in Saudi and Jeddah, they've been so kind, they've been so lovely. Very nice friendly. to meet you. Yes, thank you. Before four, everything was closed. From four o'clock onwards, it all started out and again, we're discovering more and more stuff. There's a lovely little samosa place here. Yeah. Really good value as well. Wow. So fresh and crisp and tasty. If we weren't so full from our huge Yemeni lunch, buying loads more snacks. Yeah, and our two cups each of chai. Yeah. It's chocolate time now, isn't it, honey? Yay! The things you miss, you know, first time round. I'm just looking at this house now, this property. It's incredible. Just standing there, all in the like a little tower. <laughs> it's it's ready to fall down. <laughs> yeah, it's got a bit of a lean to it. Yeah. Wow. We're going to see how much busier everything is now, and. So many more people around. Really, really coming to life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, these. We've seen people. Yeah, they chew these. Yes. Um, it's like... for cleaning your teeth, isn't it? Amazing. Oh, look at this. It's like a tower of dates. So many times. Where do you start? I'm not too sure. Because there are so many varieties that yeah. we've just never tried. This very kind gentleman has just given me Majur. 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 Yeah, these are the famous ones from Medina, apparently. Which are really good. They're the ones that don't yeah. have a stone in the middle. They're probably the most expensive. They're nice, aren't they? Mm. Oh, they do have a stone. A little one. <laughs> they're lovely. But they're really good. Safawi? So, Safawi so Medina. Safawi so Medina. Mm. Yeah. They're the ah. dark ones. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's the dark one. Safawi so Medina. Okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How lucky we're getting one each. Lee, do you want to try that one? Mm, it's a bit firmer. Mm. The texture is very different and not quite so sweet. I quite like that one. So far, Medina. Uh, there's, this, there's this smell that's coming from all these places, that all spices and herbs, and wow, it's intoxicating. <laughs> it really is. Look at them. They're so beautiful. Mm. Cardamom, such a major component of our delicious Karak chai. Oh, this tiny little, I think that's Yemeni garlic. The one that mm. grows as an individual clove we learned about in Riyadh. Yeah. Mm. That's brilliant. But, oh, it just smells so beautiful. This is the way to buy spices, not the way we buy them at home in a, in a little sealed packet. The fan's going and it's just not blowing anything at all. Oh, wow, and here you've got all your different types of grain. Your corn and your... Lentils, the different types of dal. It's just wonderful. I love markets like this. Colourful and aromatic, <laughs> should we say. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Are the hazards of travel vlogging? Oh, what's this? Hey, you can take it, I'm not going in it. This is inside one of these buildings that might get torn down eventually but this is what they're like wow the lovely old ceilings look the old beams incredible small rooms yeah that's what it looks like inside Looked a bit scary in there. Uh, yeah, it's probably not a good idea because <laughs> things are falling down. This one's not too bad, but some of them, they're obviously kind of past the point of no return. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <Fun though. laughs> yeah. It's just so wonderful to see all of these buildings open now and, you know, people walking around. It's not just us and the pigeons anymore. It's really cool. Oh. The lettuce work. Now, Lee's done some very good map reading and... Yeah, we think this is Matabuli House, which is another house that's open as a museum, so you can take a look inside. I believe it's 10 uh, real to go in. I don't know, I haven't been in. I don't think we've got the energy for any more internal searching. We're just going to wander the streets, but this is a place to look for. 
we're just sitting outside the house here on the divans relaxing and a lovely local guy just came up and he was buying himself a lemon sugarcane drink and he came and bought us one just gave it to us welcome to saudi arabia you know again just so lovely oh it's lovely and refreshing and sweet and just what i need to just keep me going for a little bit longer oh wonderful. perfect <laughs> Oh, you are just too kind. Thank you so much. Shukran. Oh. Habibi. Thank you. <laughs> Mandy's got one as well now. Such lovely people, you know, just complete stranger. Up to the street, please have a drink. Amazing. Yes. So there's something we've noticed all throughout Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, actually. You know, people yeah. are mm, so kind in this part this of the Arab world. This Arab hospitality blows me away so much. Mandy, do you want to go in? I'm feeling a bit tired. Yeah. Shall um, I go in and have a look? And you sit down outside and eat chocolates. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looking amazing. So Mandy's going to chill outside while I go for a walk around. This house is 422 years old, which is just mind-blowing, really. It's in such good condition. And this is an example of what ones that are well looked after looks like after my recent incursion into one that is being renovated look at the doors beautiful and the top there and this is uh probably a divan like the uh lounge area where the men would sit down lovely old furniture and there's this smell the incense that's burning Oud. Let's walk through and see. Wow. The coral brickwork here. The lovely old uh, coffee pots and oh, it looks like a samovar there. You can imagine everybody sitting around and um, having their meetings. This just this atmosphere in here, which just is mind blowing. Four hundred and twenty-two years history, right here. And as we step up, you can see how high the roof is. It's massive. And the intricate carving there around the top of the archways. So much work would have gone into this. Beautiful glasswork there, looking back down. Magnificent. Simple furnishings always. There's little uh, mattresses on the floor, a uh, place for doing your sewing, tea kits, of course, as always. And these lovely little doorway alcoves, window alcoves, where you sit down and you look out the trellis in there to the outside so maybe it could have been the women's quarters where people couldn't see inside i'd say so because looking at the pictures for the tea and again wow lovely roof beautiful furniture and the carpets too and they're coming through the bed Room quarters and bed would be a, just a mattress on the floor with a mosquito net over it. And then into living quarters and again you've got this lovely wooden ceiling you've got everything's kind of on an angle you can see there's no real straight lines there it's brilliant you've got this like incredible design in the lattice work here the wood so much work gone into these things and then coming through to the main living area and oh my word look at this at the ceiling intricate woodwork up there this looks quite comfortable for the people that would sit up here and meet some furnishings and then this wooden alcove just 
absolutely beautiful with a step up to what looks like an office and on three sides if you could open their shutters and have some breeze coming through and a fantastic roof I think this is a really good example of you know a, a very sort of wealthy opulent merchant's house of the time here in Al Balad well worth coming in to see uh, for only 10 Saudi Riyal um, pop in to Mirabouli house take a look for yourself amazing time back on the 7A head in hand that has just yeah. arrived, so it's, it's like quite we're being chauffeur driven <laughs> in our own limo. How about that? <laughs> Wonderful. And hasn't it been an amazing day? Awesome. Like, really interesting oh, wow. Alba. I've really enjoyed it. I'll definitely come back and explore more around this place. It's just breathtaking everywhere you look. And the hospitality, the kindness we've been showing? It just uh, blows me away, it really does. Everywhere we turn, it's welcome to Saudi Arabia. People wanting to help us. Love it.